Greetings, candidates, and welcome to the Fixed Income Investment Analysis Block Revision Session. Today we are going to begin with the paper that was done in April 2023 by the CIFA Advanced Level Candidates. Candidates were required to answer all questions and also to show all workings. This paper has five questions. We'll be answering one question at a time. I urge you to kindly attempt the questions before attending this session. April 2023 Fixed Income Investment Analysis Question 1A reads, explain three reasons why market participants prefer the swap rate curve as a benchmark of interest rate curve as opposed to a government bond yield curve. Three marks. Now, candidates, there are three curves mentioned in this question. That is the swap rate curve, swap rate curve. Another curve is the government bond yield curve, the government bond yield curve, and the third curve is the interest rate curve, interest rate curve, interest rate curve. Now candidates were to explain why the swap rate curve is preferable or it's a benchmark when determining interest rates. In other words, let's take it again. Explain three reasons why market participants prefer the swap rate curve as a benchmark of interest rate curve as opposed to a government bond yield curve. Why do market participants prefer the swap rate curve as opposed to government bond yield curve. All right? As a benchmark of interest rate curve. So the concept being tested there is the interest rate curve. What is an interest rate curve? Before we come to the uh, reasons, what is an interest rate curve? Now, candidates, an interest rate curve is also known as the yield curve. Is also known as the yield curve. And it is a graphical representation of the relationship between interest uh, rates and, the, and their maturities. Do you understand? It is a, a graphical representation of the interest rates on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Interest rate curve is also known as the uh, yield curve, it can also be termed as the term structure of interest rates. I've said it's a graphical representation of the relationship between the interest rates and the time to maturity for a set of uh, fixed income securities. It's plotted, the interest rates are plotted against time, their maturities. the interest rates, the yields. In other words, interest rates can also be referred to as yields. And I've said it plots, this curve plots the yields of bonds or other fixed income instruments against their respective maturities. Now, candidates, when computing interest rate curve or the, the yield curve, 
the SOP interest rates may be used, the government bond yield may be used. But the question is, the question is, uh, explain three reasons why market participants prefer the SOP rate curve as opposed to the government bond yield. So when plotting this interest rate curve, this vertical axis could be either swap interest uh, rates or the government bonds. But market participants prefer the swap rate curve. And what is this swap rate curve? Or it can sometimes just be called the swap curve. Swap curve can also be known as the swap curve. What is a swap curve? It is a, 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 a graphical representation of the fixed interest rates paid on interest rate, uh, interest rate swap contracts across uh, various maturities. And we know candidates interest um, Rate swaps are financial derivatives where two parties agree to exchange interest rate cash flows based on a notional principal amount. That is the swap curve. The government bond yield curve, on the other hand, is a graphical representation of the yields of government bonds across different maturities. And it shows the relationship between bond yields or interest rates and the time to maturities of bonds that are issued by, partic by a particular government. Then let's answer the question. Having understood the concepts, the swap rate curve, the government bond yield, and also the interest rate curve, we're going to answer this part of the question here. Reasons why market participants prefer the swap rate curve. Reasons why market participants prefer the swap rate curve as a benchmark over government yield curve. The first reason is because it reflects market expectations. The SOP curve reflects market expectations. The SOP rate curve reflects market expectations of future interest rates as it's derived from the fixed and floating rates of interest um, rate swap contracts. And that makes it more forward looking compared to the government bonds. You understand? And that may be influenced by various factors beyond uh, government bonds. The, the, the government bonds yield is influenced by factors beyond market expectations. So market participants prefer the swap curve because the swap curve reflects market expectations. It is more forward looking compared to government bond yields, which may be influenced by various factors beyond market expectations, such as liquidity preferences, inflation expectations, and so on. Two, credit risk neutrality credit risk neutrality now interest rate swaps are typically traded between counterparts of similar credit uh, quality which results in a swap rate curve that is uh, more neutral to credit risk compared to government bond yields which can be influenced by the credit risk of the issuing government Two, three, better 
liquidity. Better liquidity is another reason. The interest rate swap market is uh, often more uh, liquid than government bond markets, especially for the longer maturities. And that means that swap uh, rates may provide more reliable and timely information about market expectations and the sentiments in the market. Market uh, better liquidity. Four, term structure coverage is another benefit associated with the term structure coverage. The swap curve covers a wider range of maturities than government bond yield curves, especially in the longer uh, end of the yield curve. And that allows market participants to observe and analyze interest rate expectations across various tenors more uh, comprehensively. Because you know, government bonds are short. They have short maturity uh, periods. But swaps may have a longer um, uh, maturity. They cover a wider range of maturities than government bonds. The government bonds, are the maturities are fixed. But the swap contracts are not. Another advantage is associated with pricing, derivative pricing, derivative pricing. Interest rate swaps are integral in derivative pricing and risk management activities for many financial institutions. So using the swap curve as a benchmark aligns with the pricing it also aligns with the hedging strategies employed by such institutions. And that's why market participants would prefer swap rate curve as opposed to the uh, government yield curve. So these are five results. Number one, the swap curve reflects market expectations. There's also a reason associated with risk credit risk neutrality, better liquidity, term structure coverage, and derivative pricing. So candidates were to give three. I've given you five reasons. Any three here would earn the three marks. Earn you the three marks. So candidates, these are five, and they're not the only reasons, uh, learners, there are many more reasons we can, uh, let me add the last one here, global, global consistency. Global consistency is another point that we can uh, add here. Swap curve, uh, swap rates, let me call it that way, the, the swap rates, are relatively consistent across different uh, countries and regions, making them uh, suitable for international comparisons and analysis. But government bonds, on the other hand, can vary significantly due to different, uh, differences in monetary policies, economic conditions, and also credit ratings among countries. And you need to recall, uh, candidates, you say that the interest rate curve, when, 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 when drawing this curve, we can have on the vertical here, vertical axis, we may have either government bonds or the swap rates. So we've been explaining reasons why uh, market participants prefer having the, the swap rates on the uh, uh, vertical side as opposed to having government bonds. So we given six uh, results. Now let's move on to part B of the question which reads, explain how the following uh, relationships between coupon rate and required rate of return affect a bond's value relative to par value. Roman one, coupon rate and required return are equal to max coupon rate is lower than required rate of return to max 
Roman 3, coupon rate is higher than required rate of return. That is a B, Roman 1, we are to explain how the relationship between coupon rate and required rate of return affect the bonds value, affects the bonds value relative to par value. So the first scenario, Roman 1, is where the coupon rate and required return are equal. Now, learners, each of these scenarios or relationship between the coupon rate and, and the, the required rate of return affects a bond's value relative to its par value. And where the coupon rate and the required return are equal, then the bonds value will be equal to its par value. Here, the bonds value will be equal to the par value. Where the coupon rate is equal to the required rate of return, then the bonds value will be equal to the par value. When the coupon rate of a bond is equal to the required rate of return, also known as the yield to maturity, then the bonds value will be equal to its par value. Why? That will be so because the coupon payments that are received by the bond holder perfectly compensate for the required rate of return. In other words, in other words, that is to say that the bond is priced at the par value, meaning its market price equals its first value. Yes. It equals what? Face value. The market price equals face value. The bonds value is equal to the par value. That is Roman 1. Then Roman 2. Coupon rate is lower than required rate of return. Now candidates, when the coupon rate is lower than the required rate of return, the bond is said to be trading at a discount. In this scenario, the bond is said to be trading at a discount. And in this scenario, the bond's market price will be less than its par value. Do you understand? The bond's market return will be less than will be less than par value. The bonds market return in this scenario will be less than its par value. And the reason is, and the reason for this candidate is that the bonds coupon payments are insufficient to compensate investors for the required rate of return. In other words, investors demand a higher yield to compensate for the lower coupon payments. And as a result, the bonds uh, price decreases until its yield to maturity is in line with the required rate of return. Three. Coupon rate is higher than required rate of return. Now here, candidates, the bond is trading at a premium. The bond in this scenario is trading at a premium. Where the coupon rate is higher than the required rate of return, the bond is trading 
at a premium. The bond is trading at a premium and in this case, the bond's market price will be higher than its power value. The bond's market price will be higher than power than its power value. The bond's market price, where the bond is trading at a premium, the bond's market price is higher than its power value. And candidates, the higher coupon payments provide more income to investors. They provide more income to investors than uh, what is required by the market. Than what? Than what is required by the market rate. And consequently, investors are willing to pay a premium in order to acquire this higher income stream. And therefore, the bonds prices increases its yield to maturity until it aligns with the required rate of return. That is the explanation, candidates, how these three relationships between coupon rate and required rate of return affects the bonds value relative to power value. <clears throat> Each two marks, two marks, two marks, two marks, total six marks. Total six marks. Now let us move on to Fixed Income Investment Analysis, April 2023, question 1C. He further limited an AAA rated company issued fully convertible bonds on the following terms one year ago. So we have the terms there, we have the face value of the bond, the coupon rate, the time remaining to maturity, the interest payment, we have the principal amount, the conversion ratio, we have the current market uh, uh, value of the convertible bond, then we also have the market price of a convertible bond at 1,175 shillings. Triple A rated companies can issue plain vanilla bonds without conversion option at an interest rate of 9.5%. Required Calculate today's Roman 1, straight value of the bond, 2 marks, conversion value of the bond, 2 marks, conversion premium, 2 marks, percentage of downside risk, 3 marks, and 4, conversion uh, parity price, 2 marks. This is C. Straight value of the bond. That's the question. Straight value of the bond. First of all, candidates, what is a triple A rated company? Now, a triple A rated company or companies are those companies that have been assigned the highest credit rating by a credit rating agency. And such high rating indicates that the company has an exceptionally strong capacity to meet its financial commitments. And it is considered to have the lowest credit risk among all the rated entities. That is a triple A rated company. He further limited is an triple A rated company. So candidates, these companies the investors typically perceive triple rated companies as extremely stable and reliable in terms of their ability to repay debt obligations, including bonds and other forms of financing. Candidates were required to calculate straight value of the bond whose Terms we've been provided in the question, we have the face value of the bond, the coupon rate, the time 
remaining to maturity, which is three years. The face value of the bond is a thousand uh, shillings. The coupon rate is 8.5%. The time remaining to maturity, three years. The interest payment is annually. The principal payment is at the end of the maturity. The conversion ratio is 25 shillings or just 25. The current market value of the convertible bond is 45 shillings and the market uh, price of the convertible bond is 1,175 shillings. So candidates who are first of all required to calculate the straight value of the bond. So learners again, it's important to understand terms. What's the meaning of straight value of the bond? What is the meaning of straight value of a bond? Now, the straight value of a bond is simply the intrinsic value of a bond. The intrinsic value of a bond. It refers to the intrinsic value without uh, considering any embedded options. In other words, candidates, it's the present value of all the expected future cash flows from the bond. And we know that would include the coupon payments and the principal repayments. So the straight value of the bond is the present value of the coupon payments and the principal repayment. And that's from that definition, we get the formula. The value of the bond will be equal to will be equal to um, will be equal to the sum of two things. Will be equal to the sum of two things. One, the the principal. I mean, the pre, the, the present value of the coupon. Uh, 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 payments and the principal repayment. It is the present value of all the expected cash flows from the bond. And that is the coupon payments, which is the interest, which is an annuity, and the principal repayment, which is a lump sum payment. And that is the par value of the bond. So we are going to discount the two. The interest and the principal amount or the par value of the bond. So the value of the bond candidates will be equal to the present value or let me just have one formula there will be equal to the interest times the present value annuity factor r n plus power value times the pre present value interest factor R N. These two will give us the straight value of the bond. We discount by this is a factor discounting factor of the 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 annuity which is the coupon payments. And this is the par value of the bond, which is a lump sum. So we are going to discount it using this factor. So what is the interest? Go back to the question. We read that the coupon rate is 8.5%. And the face value is 100 I mean a thousand shillings. So the, the interest here is 8.5% times 1,000. That is the interest. Then we have, we are going to discount this 8% of a thousand by this factor. The 
rate we are provided in the question we have uh, below the information given there. AAA rated companies can issue plain vanilla bonds without conversion option at the interest rate of 9.5%. We are going to use 9.5% to discount this annuity, 9.5%. And uh, you see from the question candidates, we have uh, the time remaining to maturity is three years. So that will be our end. And given that uh, the, 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 the discounting rate is in is provided as a, as a decimal, then this cannot be read from the tables. So we are going to use the following formula. Um, the factor will be one minus one over one plus R raised to N. This is the annuity formula we divide by R. That is the discounting factor. So this discounting factor, that is the discounting factor. Plus the power value from the question, the power value the first value, the power value is the first value of 1000. This is 1000 times the present value interest factor. The present value interest factor is 1 over 1 plus R raised to N. Raised to N. We discount. This is the discounting factor of a lump sum. Are you following candidates? Now this will be equal to this. This will be equal to eighty-five times one minus one over R. We saw is supposed to be nine point five. This is divided by one nine point five. This is one. Uh, nine point five point zero nine five raised to three raised to three. This one here is minus over zero point zero nine five. plus 1,000 times 1 over 1.095 raised to 3, raised to 3. So this we can now find the answer. So answer here is 974.96. So candidates, that is the straight value of the bond. 974 shillings and 96 cents. That is the value, the straight value of the bond. That will earn just two marks. These are two marks. Two easy marks. Then uh, Roman two. Conversion value of the bond. Conversion value of the bond. Roman two. Conversion value of the bond. Conversion value of the bond. Now, what's the meaning of conversion value of the bond? What is the conversion value of a bond? Now, and it is the conversion value of a bond applies specifically, first of all, to the convertible bonds. That's one thing you need to appreciate, that the conversion value applies only to the convertible bonds. And these are bonds that come with an option to be converted into a, a predetermined number of shares of the issuer's common stock at 
a specific price, which is known as the conversion price. So that's a second point for you to appreciate. First of all, that uh, is that the conversion value only applies to conversion bonds. And what are conversion convertible bonds? It only applies to convertible bonds. But what are the convertible bonds? Now, convertible bonds are bonds that come with the option to be converted into predetermined number of shares of the issuer's common stock at a specific price, which is known as the conversion price. So this conversion value, in other words, candidate, represents the current market value of the stock received if the investor exercises the conversion option immediately. You understand? The convertible bonds are expected to be converted in the future, say five years or six years or seven years or 10 years, whatever the, the case may be. But the conversion value will, here represents the current market value of the stock that is received today. So if an in, investor A has a, 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 bought bonds in company B, convertible bonds, that means that the convertible bonds come with an option to have the bonds be converted into shares. So the conversion value represents the current market value of the shares if the investor exercises the conversion option today. So it's important for you to understand these terms before answering the questions. So what is the formula for calculating the conversion value of this bond, we have a bond here, we have the details been given, all the information relating to the bond. Now the formula is as follows, conversion value of the bond is equal to current market price of the common stock. times the conversion ratio so the conversion value of the bond is equal to the current uh, market uh, price of a common stock times the conversion ratio which is equal to 45 times the conversion ratio 25 45 times 25 this is equal to 1,125 shillings. 1,125 shillings, that is Roman 2. Roman 3, calculate conversion premium, 2 marks. Calculate conversion premium. What is the meaning of conversion premium? Now, candidates, the conversion premium of a convertible bond refers to the additional cost an investor pays for the option to convert the bond into the predetermined number of shares of the issuer's common stock at a specific price in future. It is the additional cost that an investor pays when exercising the option to convert the convertible bonds into shares. You understand? And the conversion premium is determined as a difference between the market conversion price and the underlying share price. You understand? 
It is the difference between the share price and the market conversion price. This is the difference between the market conversion price and the share price. Do you have the market conversion price from the question? No, we do not have it. So what is the formula for calculating the uh, market conversion price? Now, candidates, market conversion price is equal to um, convertible bond uh, price convertible bond price divide by the conversion ratio that is the formula for the market conversion price it's convertible bond price divide by the conversion ratio that will give us the conversion market price then we subtract the share price which we know is 45 shillings this 45 convertible bond price now do we have the convertible bond price the convertible bond price do we have the convertible bond price uh, convertible bond price so this is 45 so the convertible bond price from the question, the last item in the information given, you can see market price of convertible bond 11.75. So you have 11.75 divided by the conversion ratio 25 minus 45. This is equal to 2 shillings. So that is the conversion premium, two shillings. Market conversion price minus the share price is equal to two shillings. That is Roman three. We move on to Roman four. Percentage of downside risk. Percentage of downside risk. Now candidates, investors usually use the straight line value as a measure of the downside risk of a convertible security because it is assumed that the price of the convertible security cannot fall below the, the straight line, uh, straight value, below the straight value. So that one is used as, is used to, to, to determine the percentage of the downside risk. It is measured as a percentage of the straight value. You understand? Which is equal to we are, we are talking about percentage of downside risk. I've said it is measured as a percentage of the straight value and is computed as follows. We have convertible bond price divide by the straight value minus one, minus one. So this will be equal to the convertible value. We have it here, 11.75. 11.75. Then the straight value we calculated in Roman 1. The straight value calculated in Roman 1, 974.96. 974.96. This we subtract 1. We subtract 1. So that will be equal to, I get here, 2 point. This is 20.5%. 20.5% is the percentage of downside risk. The percentage of downside risk, 20.5. Let's move on to calculate the last item. 
Number five, the last item here is the conversion parity price. Conversion parity price. Conversion parity price. First of all, what is the meaning of conversion parity price? Now, candidates, the conversion parity price of a convertible bond refers to the theoretical price an investor would pay per share of the common stock if they immediately exercise the conversion option on the bond. In other words, it's essentially the break-even point where the value of the, converti uh, the, 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 the converted stock equals the market price of the convertible bond. It's the break-even point where the value of the converted stock equals the market price of the convertible bond. And is calculated by dividing the convertible bond price by the conversion ratio. The conversion parity price is equal to the convertible bond price. This is bond price. The convertible bond price divided by the conversion ratio. We have the convertible bond price, 11.75, divided by 25. That will give us the conversion parity price. This is equal to 47. So 47 is a conversion parity price. 47 is the conversion parity price, 47 shillings. And we said that the conversion parity price is the break-even point where the value of the market of um, the value of the conversion converted stock equals the market price of the converted the convertible bond. The convertible bond. These are just two marks. These are two marks. One, two, two marks. Here candidates were to earn three marks. One, two, three marks. In Roman three, three marks. These were two marks. That and that, two marks. Roman two, again, two marks. One, two marks. So, candidates, we've answered the first question that was tested in April 2023. The subject is fixed income investment analysis. This paper was done by the CIFA advanced level candidates. In our next session, we are going to answer the second question. I urge you to attempt the question before attending the next lesson. And candidates, for those of you who are sitting for the exams, make sure that you memorize the formula. Make sure you have the formula at the uh, back of your mind for the today's question. Make sure you also read further. You recall in our first question, part A, we explained the reasons why market participation, uh, why market participants prefer the swap rate curve as a benchmark over the government yield cap as a benchmark. So the interest rate curve, we saw that uh, the, the, it can be computed against time and the, the, the government yield cap, government bonds or the swap rates. So in revising, read further, find out what is the importance of the interest rate cap. What is the importance of interest rate cap. That is a question that I want you to also look at. What is the importance? We've seen that the market participants prefer the swap curve. But the question can also be asked, what's the importance of the interest rate curve? So thank you for attending the lesson. Bye-bye.